tonight was a big night for Rufus Sport fighters, and I'm curious if you saw your teammates' fights and if that had any um, motivation for you. It did. Normally, I'm not like big on watching fights before I'm about to fight. I'm already like amped up as it is, and all those pre-fight emotions and things that are going through your mind and everything. But I've matured and grown so much as a fighter now. And with, what was that now, 19 victories and four defeats, I don't know how many, if I say you forget, right? And that's something that my coach instills in me from the Thai fighters in Thailand. They just, they forget how many fights they have. You know, so for me, it's just another day in the office and then seeing my teammates go out and shine, no matter what promotion it could be in, it, it gives me that motivation and that, that pump and that, that buzz, you know. So uh, win, lose, or draw for any of the guys that I ever see fight before me, whether on the same card or, like I said, across the world, wherever it may be, um, it, it just gives me great joy. Or if they lose, it, it still it gives me that motivation and that uh, desire and passion to want to go out there and still win. Was that the, the the motivation to run out there with the flying start, with the the flying knee, right to, right to get it go? Was that part of the game plan, or you just were excited to get in there? Excited to get in there, honestly. That's uh, the maturity and growth as a fighter as well, too. Uh, everyone knows I obviously have a gas tank for days and days and days, and never get tired. So that's something my coaches have slapped me around a bit and say, if you never get tired, then why are you not throwing more? <laughs> why are you not just right off the bat? And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, this has been one of the best fight weeks of my life. This is uh, honestly one of the the easiest uh, ways to make weight, uh, the, the the greatest promotion and everything that we've had with Bellator and the Zone and all eyes on the the featherweight division, all eyes on Bellator, and I'm just uh, soaking it all in. And there, to me, it's, it's just was no pressure at all, no no nothing, no no nerves, no. And it, it just that comes with just time, time and experience, because. Uh, being here in San Jose for the very first time, something very uh, incredible, you know, Scott Coker's home. So this is, uh, this is something big for me, you know what I mean? The home of the sharks. Uh, the shark came out tonight, the great brown shark. <laughs> <laughs> your, your opponent came out with everything with the kitchen sink. Uh, looks like he uh, was presenting some challenges. You turned it around, made it your game, but was it your experience to kind of weather the storm and look for your opening? And and, and, uh, and be able to, to get the win. I mean, how, how do you feel about the way he came at you? And, and, and did you feel at any point that uh, it, it might be a, uh, a difficult situation for you? Yeah, it's something that I kind of anticipated. And like I mentioned earlier, not waiting, not uh, seeing, oh, what are they going to do? Or this. I, that's why I just ran at him. You know, I just, uh, let's get this fight going. That's, that's what we're here for, right? And that's what the fans want to see, putting on a show. Don't matter if it's something jumping, spinning, flying, whatever it could be. You know, uh, uh, I introduced him to the Air Matador. So uh, he's not the only one who can fly. So, you know what I mean? That was uh, the Flight 180, the final destination. So um, uh, I, I want to be exciting out there. That's the point, you know? I want to make the fans happy, the a crowd pleaser. And that's something that, again, my, my coach, Duke Rufus, instills in us, too, is to, to go out there and get going right away and get, get a, dominating, a dominating, exciting finish. And uh, yeah, I, I believe I did that. It didn't happen right away like I did, you know, thought it would be. But um, he forgot that uh, I can wrestle, too. It's not just, uh, you know, I'm not a one-trick pony. I'm not just a one-dimensional one fighter. You know, I'm, a, I'm the complete fighter, and I want to fight and be dominant everywhere. Now in uh, the next round, they're going to have the uh, kind of the random draw to uh, determine things. If you have yours, if you get picked first and have the say, do you go straight for the title shot, or what's your kind of game plan there? <sighs> you know that question has uh, arisen many times, but uh, just be ready for whatever. You know, obviously, I will. Uh, I'm not going to say there. There is no easiest route for this. All right, yeah, you know, you just had Carvalho here, you had Campos, and now we're going to see at the end of the month the other guys too. So, and those are all killers as well too. So there's no easy route for this. Uh, for me, I'm healthy, unscathed, injury-free. Likewise for my opponents, I want it for them. So for me, it's, uh, you know, if there's a card in December, you know, because you get to choose what date you'd like. So I don't know if it's it'll be for the title or if it'll be uh, for when I want to fight or who I want to fight. Uh, we'll see. It's something I'll speak to my coach about, my management about, and that's how they make the brackets. But uh, all these fights will be five rounds anyways. So title on the line or not, uh, to me it don't matter because at the end of the day, I want to win this whole thing. I don't just want one title at the end. I want 
to be the undisputed featherweight world champion. So I'm looking, there's three more to go in my mind. So even with the next one, if it was the title fight and think, oh, I made it, I did it because there would still be two more left. So there's still three men that I need to take out and we'll see who the, that's going to be. Other than advancing, obviously, and going towards the belt, is there an extra incentive in fighting somebody who's so highly rated and undefeated and having the chance to give him his first professional loss? Absolutely, you know. And uh, you know, I told him he he will learn from this and he'll grow from this. He's so young in his career and young age and uh, young being in Bellator too. So I, you know, I told him I was nowhere near. Uh, where he was at his age, you know, at that in his stage of his career. So he, you never know. We'll probably cross paths in the future once this Grand Prix is done, or he'll work his way back up. And he's obviously, a great fighter, still got a lot to learn. And but look how far he's come and evolved already. So he's one of the best out of 16 guys. He was one of the best. And Bellator could have chose anybody, but he was one of them, and he was also one of the undefeated as well too. And we still have Mr. Borix, and we still have uh, Mr. McKee. So. Uh, you know, uh, those always got to go. So, I mean, it could be either any one of those guys for me next or, like you mentioned, the title. And Mr. Archuleta only has one uh, stint on his record as well, too. So that could be me as well, too. Uh, but uh, I've uh, had my eyes on all these guys, and I'm ready for any single one of them at any given time. Last one. Emmanuel, as a Latino, do you have a desire to fight in, Latin, in Latin America or, or to fight in, in Mexico? Absolutamente, claro que sí. Me gustaría, como me encantaría pelear en México. Uh, I, I would love it, you know, for sure. Or Brazil, you know. Yo hablo portugués también. <laughs> yeah, so, obrigado Brasil. And so, uh, you know, all of, uh, you know, Latin America, Southern America, all the Americas right here. I, I'll go up north to Canada, all my Canadian friends, eh? You know, so I, I'm Mr. International here, you know what I mean? It was Mr. Shoney Carter, now it's Mr. Matador. So, I, uh, you know, I... Uh, I'd, I'd love to fight anywhere if they if they do go, but obviously people have mentioned Hawaii. So, <laughs> I mean, the last time they were there, I didn't get to be there. So, I mean, I mean, it'd be a it'd be a great one. But right now, uh, like I said, I'll uh, enjoy uh, myself, enjoy some good time, uh, still be training because you never know. Uh, one of these guys I shared the locker room with, or the guys who won tonight, they could be next. Or at the end of the month, they're gonna fly me out there, and we're gonna see who it's gonna be next. But uh, Obviously, stay healthy, stay injury-free, stay working hard, and be ready for whoever, whenever, wherever. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.